What's poppin' gang? Are we living or what? So as the Transformers colon generations colon war for Cybertron colon siege kicks off, we finally find ourselves in a post-Prime Wars world. And it did sort of seem like Power of the Primes wrapped up a bit sharpish. Actually, did it? Or did Combiner Wars just bang on for absolute years? God, I'm, I'm wearing out my snarky internet guy face muscles. But although Power of the Primes maybe didn't match the full-on fan service fun explosion of Titan's Return, it was still a total treat for late G1 mooks like me. Like, imagine a wide-release retail mainline with Battle Trap, Moon Racer, and a full-size Abominus in it. Bing Pop. So today, let's pour one out for Power of the Primes with Punch Counter Punch, or Potapur Puckapa. So this bodacious backwards man is an all-new take on the legend legendary reversible undercover autobond, who was another one of those strange experimental 87 lads with a weird one-off gimmick from that certain moment in time when Hasbro were just sort of freestyling it. Basically a kind of inverse triple changer with a single alt mode and two robot forms. And being a perennial botcon fan fave, it does kind of make sense that he'd pop up in Power of the Primes as a curious online only special edition with a fancy flappity box and that awkward bloody name that just occasionally makes my entire brain glitch out. There he is! Flippin' couch punter couch. <laughs> couch punter couch. So listen up straight, your biscuit heads, because PCP is in full effect. Here we go with Pounce Crunchy Pants in what is ostensibly his default mode as blue and yellow Autobot fella Punch. And he sort of comes off a little weird and skinny with his oddly tapered silhouette, all humongous flared legs and oddly undersized upper styles. Like the head's actually pretty tight with a lush Optimus-alike mouthplate and sweet spiky bike helmet with a fierce free-flowing ball neck. Belly's a bit boxy in Boarsville with its basic-ass robo detail and cross hair nipples, but the waist swivel's heartily hefty and that creamy orange is pure living custard. It's just those arms, man. Like, I do love the saucy red gloves, but the baby biceps just come off so scrawny. And that drifty, swept back shoulder kibble boxes in most of the movement and just makes me feel all claustrophobic. Meanwhile, the legs start off alright with these tasty turbo thighs, but like, these footless enormo shins are just laughably lengthy. The reversible knees do give him some major pose power, like he can pull off all kinds kinds of lunges and kicks and even rock the Robotech chicken neck look. But he just never really looks any good stomping around on these big hollow pillars of bugger all with like a shin mounted cup holder. Throw in this pathetic plastic pistol and Autobot's just not a great look for Count Peter Crouch. I do still love the colours and the face but he just comes off a little lame and listless. I don't hate it but I'm not living. I kind of want to believe he's just saving some suaveness for the other modes. <laughs> Look, there it is. Yes, mate, all it takes is a swift shoulder flip and a few minor tweaks and Benedict counterpunches up in this. So this is Punch's undercover alter ego, which definitely passes for a decent Decepticoon. I mean, obviously I'm biased because blue Decepticons are my jam, but come on, this is so much cooler and you know it. Like these striking splayed out shoulders give him immediate visual heft. They feel way less restrictive. You got these crisp wheels on the go instead of Punch's awkward internals. Legs are serving tons more detail and definition and actual feet. They are only painted on like some kind of single toe hoof dealio, but sometimes that's all it takes, punch. Also, this Decepticon body block is way ballsier, like it's got actual features. Check out that silver badge box popping super hard against the blueness. And these sweet windows are clearly a better focal point than just some yellow. Face is perhaps a little too gloomy. Like I love the mercury chin beard, but the eyes are super subtle and maybe just a little too nestled into his helmety brow, which I guess does work for an incognito guy, but just bugs me a bit. But overall, Crunch Monster Munch just kicks way more ass in bad guy mode. Like, he looks cooler, moves easier, and just is better. It's like he's disguised as a better looking version of himself. Anyway, you may have noticed the faction badges flop down on these little flap flaps, presumably so he doesn't get rumbled the first time somebody walks behind him. But what of these suspicious circular saw holes? As a deluxe Power of the Primes guy, Poochie Pooch Pound comes with a Prime Armor Combiner hand. But he doesn't do the Combiner thing, so... Okay. I guess you can just bang it on there for the punch counter punch hench tummy punch. We've also got little Primer Prime as a packing piggyback Prime Master, because, dunno, apparently the world doesn't deserve a miniature stranglehold. But Primer herself is a pretty swish looking semi translucent miniature ice golem with impressive everything piping who folds up into. This. And you can like slot it into the hand, which you can then pop onto the punch center punch to activate the power of the papoose. What is this?
What am I doing here? What do I get out of this? It doesn't like unlock anything or mean anything or even look cool. It's just on there now. All right, so I guess it's mostly imagination based for the kids. And most of the toys do come with a little power up card that tells you how they react to a certain Prime Master. But like, I don't think there was one in here. I guess it is pretty sweet that the legendary 13 Prime characters now finally all have action figures after years of build up. But now they're finally here, it just kind of sucks that they're all basically accessories that don't do anything. And follow and hot on the heels of the tangible, tactile, head swap fun fest of Titan's return. This all just feels a bit toothless. Anyway, car mode. <laughs> Transformation's pretty nice with a rare example of the chest blep, but mostly it's very much the leg show. But there's Echo's a dead end in there, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, providing you're not completely sick of it. And I love how they like unfold a couple extra times to give him a windscreen over his windscreen. It'd be very easy to be like, oh, that's cheating, but like it improves the car mode and the robot mode, so why not? This is a pretty slick job. Just a nicely rendered, generically pretty sports car. Kind of Mercedes-y, little bit Audi-y. I always appreciate a car mode that feels like it could be part of my world, you know? Like it's not some silly sci-fi space mobile or a specific brand deal motor you only ever see in the US of States. It's just some car. I feel like I saw three of these on the way to Tesco this morning. So shape-wise, it's highly swish and quite a dish. Sporting lush convex curves and gallons of gorgeous grunt. Definitely got some delish detail on the go, like these hood vents and the sculpted door shapes. Although it can be tricky to mentally separate them from the panel lines. And that grill does look a smidge smashed. Colors are pretty frickin' fab though. Like I am lost in this ocean of royal blue. The silvery touches are just righteously regal. And dig these rip ass red rims. Wheels are looking well wicked. Like they're so broad and low and badass. But like I'm not totally confident they actually reach the ground. So the chest and toes are in for a one way trip to Scrape City. Not thoroughly convinced about the clear windows as well. Like I appreciate that it has them instead of just opaque imagination panels. But all they seem to do is show off the guts inside. Now, there is a smidge of mild gimmick stuff on the go, but it's all very optional. Like you can smush the gun on top, or the fist, or just clump everything together and bash it all on there if that's what you're into, you weirdo. Plus you can pop a prime baby or two up the back end for road trip mode two, bunch out for lunch. So it's by no means flawless or even super show stopping, but I don't know, it's just nice that plush Candy Crush gets to have his own alt mode identity without having to crowbar in a Titan cockpit or a combiner boner or even be an easy reason. Paint. And it is kind of weird to feel this pleased to see a standard gimmick free car mode, because for a while that was all there was in the whole chug verse. But I mean, when was the last time it happened? Friggin' skids? Plus, it's easily the best deluxe Power of the Primes car mode, but there were only two and Jazz was rubbish. So with a solid car form, a good ass robot mode, and a slightly naff robot mode, I reckon Prince Crotch Pinchers knocked out a pretty respectable score. But I don't know, I feel like I was expecting a game changer. Cause even with a fancy box and all the special edition online exclusive pomp, he's still just another goddamn deluxe. I don't know if I'm disappointed, I'm definitely not surprised, but come on, he's all right. Sometimes it'd be like that. So that's all for now. My name's Theo and check me out. I just made it through a whole video about Punch Counterpunch without accidentally saying cut. <laughs>